Self-defense myth number 11. Uh, the trained martial artist, professional fighter, will always win. They won't. What tends to happen is, if you don't train for the reality of a street encounter, then when it happens, and all the variables come into play, you panic and you crumble. So I've gone over in other videos what happens when it's the, the three siblings, you know, the martial artist, the self-defense, and the pro fighter, or the match fighter. Um, I've gone over in other things the uh, language that gets used and the reality of things, the objective of self-defense to get away and all the rest of this. What tends to happen is this. The trained guy has a whole bunch of different things he can use. The non-trained guy will only have three or four things that he uses, but he goes out every weekend looking for a fight. That's what he does. So, although the guy's never stepped foot in a gym, never stepped foot in a dojo or on a mat, he, over the years, has got three or four things that he knows will work. He will blindside you, he will bite, he will gouge, he will scratch, he will kick. I've known of people who, when they go to have a fight, will say, uh, before we go, before we go, nothing below the belt, nothing below the belt. And the other guy goes, yeah, okay. And then the first guy immediately kicks the guy in the nose. There are no rules in a street fight, so, you know, when the guy, to me, when the guy would be going, nothing below the belt, nothing, that would be when I would crack the guy. But, you know, that's, that's just me. The idea that the trained fighter, or the trained martial artist, or the whatever, will always, always win, it doesn't work. Um, you know, you, we, we've seen it now with uh, MMA, with their weight classes. Conor McGregor is never going to beat Brock Lesnar. Right, so the reason why Brock will win isn't necessarily because he's also trained, it's because if you're a trained fighter but you're much, much smaller, much, much weaker than the other guy, it's not going to happen. It's you know, sorry, it's not. Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and certainly Horian Gracie's side of the family did a really, really, really good job marketing, marketing it to a point where everybody thought, if I learn this, it's a superpower, I'm invincible. No. This is why avoidance is always best. If we can avoid it, we should, because you never know what the other person is doing. Also, you can be you know, a heavily trained martial artist with 10 or 11 black belts to your name. The other guy pulls out a knife, stabs you. You haven't won that one. So, if you go to a, to, to, to a self-defense class or a martial arts class and they tell you, if you keep training with us, you'll be fine, you've nothing to worry about. That's a clear sign that you need to find another club. I am very upfront with everybody. There's a reason that it's awareness, avoidance first, then aggression with, with the Arvid's illness. We always, always, always try to get away because there are no guarantees. There's absolutely no guarantee whatsoever that you're going to win. Yes, we, we, we've got a, a better chance of, of coming away safely. And when I say win, I'm talking about, of course, in a self-defense environment where the objective is to get away as quickly as possible. We are not there to have a scrap and to beat the other person. We're there to get away without us being beaten. So, that's just very quick on this clip. Uh, any comments, queries, or suggestions, put them in the box. I will answer them. I always answer everything. Until next time, stay safe.